Hi, I'm Big Lou, and this is Big Lou Barbecue, and other things I want to do. And let me tell you what I've got going on for you. We're doing a London broil today. I'm going to do it on my Weber kettle and with a little accessory. I'll tell you about the accessory in just a minute, all right? Um, I've got many options of how to cook this London broil, but this is what I decided to go with, all right? Um, a London broil is a basically a big steak that's cut from the round roast. It's They take the round roast and they cut it kind of flat like a steak. And London broil really doesn't refer to the cut quite as much as it refers to the method. You marinate the meat and then you roast it either in the oven and then shove it under the broil broiler for sort of a reverse sear effect, or you cook it indirect on your grill and then reverse sear it because it's basically a big thick steak. So big steaks you want to reverse sear. So you want to cook it slow and then you want to sear it. You want to cook it slow, then you want to sear it. Wonder what I'm going to be using to cook this, all right? Uh, but I got several options to cook it, but this one makes it easy. I don't have to remove any stones or remove anything or add more charcoal. I can just sear it like this, but we're going to be using some cast iron too. All right, I got this uh, London broil was sent to me by a subscriber. It comes from Pasture Prime Farms, but Pasture Prime Farms isn't the one who sent it to me or paid for it anyway. It was a subscriber. I want to thank that subscriber for it. Also, the chicory that I used in the rub was sent to me by him as well. It comes from uh, nuts.com. What I did was I took a coffee rub recipe. I'll tell you more about that. Replace the coffee with chicory, all right? And I tried this out on a chuck roast a few weeks ago that I did in my barrel cooker. I didn't do that a video with that. I'm gonna have to do a video of that in the future, but I gotta tell you that chuck roast was delicious, and I know this rub is gonna be good on this London broil. I'm also gonna be making Aaron Franklin's um, espresso barbecue sauce. That's a popular recipe. You type in Aaron Franklin's espresso barbecue sauce into your Googler machine and you'll get all kinds of links as to where it is. It's in books. I'm getting it out of a book actually, but it's in several books and it's in uh, all over the internet. Just type that in, but I'll leave a link to Aaron Franklin's espresso barbecue sauce down below. You type it in. There's lots of different websites that have it, but I'll try to find one. Leave a link down below for you. All right. Um, let me show you how I I marinated it yesterday. I marinated it for 24 hours. I made the marinade up. I like to make marinades up. I like to get creative with it. Now don't get crazy. You'll ruin your meat. See, there's a fine line between creative and crazy. I kind of skirt that line a little bit. My wife thinks I've crossed it. Maybe. I told her she was driving me crazy. You know what she told me? It's not a drive. It's just a short putt. All right, well, since I wanted to serve it with an espresso barbecue sauce, I'm going to put espresso in the marinade, too, so I brewed up some. All right, starting with this 1.7-pound London broil uh, roast or large steak from Pasture Prime Farms, and I'm going to put it into a Ziploc bag. If I could get the Ziploc bag open and got to get the package it came in open, too. I was having a little trouble with uh, enclosures today. You'll see that when I do the jar here in a minute. All right, I dispose of the package it came in, and it's time to make up the marinade. Now, I'm going to start with one part soy and one part Worcestershire. If you do that, you got a pretty good... Uh, Beef marinade, a lot of the marinades you buy in the store, Allegro, Dale's, Moore's, things like that are soy and Worcestershire based. So you just start with a soy and Worcestershire and you got a good beef marinade. Now I'm going to add some espresso into this because that's part of the point of this cook. And it's, it's a lean cut of meat, I'm adding in some olive oil too. And normally you'd add some uh, onion or garlic powder. What I'm doing is adding some of that chicory rub that I'm going to use. And I try to get that lid on, but it wouldn't go on straight. It goes on all kind of caterwampers and askew. Finally, I get it on, and it's time to shake, rattle, and roll, and get it all mixed up and thoroughly integrated together, and uh, open it back up, dump it into the uh, package. You know how to marinate meat. Not a big deal here. All right, get all the air out of it, uh, and um, squeeze all the air out of it, zip it up, and I'm going to set it in the ice box for 24 hours or more. All right, the next day looks like this. Okay, it's been in the ice box, the refrigerator, for more than 24 hours in the marinade that we made, that soy and Worcestershire sauce marinade we made with a little bit of espresso in it. And it's time to put a rub on it. This is the rub I'm going to be putting on it. Now, what is this rub? Well, in Stephen Reichland's How to Grill book, there we go. Um, I think it's page 442, around page 440. He's got about nine different rub recipes, and one of them is his Java rub. Now, he sells that, so I had a hard time finding that Java rub recipe online to put a link below. And the only place I found it was at, like, 
barbecue forums and stuff like that. So I'm not going to list a link to that Java rub recipe, but uh, I'll have a link to this book down below if you want want it. But anyway, what I did to the Java rub recipe, or you could just find any coffee rub recipe you want. What I did is I substituted in chicory for the coffee. I substituted in turbinado sugar for the brown sugar and carob powder for the cocoa powder. And I used this on a um, chuck roast a few weeks ago and it was delicious. So I'm going to use the rest of it on our so a good bit of the rest of it on this London broil here. Now, if you're not familiar with chicory, it's got a smell and a flavor that's very similar to coffee, but it's more bitter. It comes actually from a root, but just opening up the bag, man, it, oh, that smells delicious, all right? But uh, you can make a drink out of it, and in New Orleans, they oftentimes mix the chicory one-third with the coffee, or you could buy like New Orleans-style uh, coffee with chicory blend. It'll have about one-third chicory in it. But this is just um, pure chicory. Uh, in place of the coffee for Reichland's Java Rub recipe. It really is good. So we're just going to uh, sprinkle it on the London broil. You know how to um, put a rub on meat. Pat it down in there. Get the other side. And get it smeared somewhat evenly so there's no big pockets of, of stuff. And get it on the edges too. All right. Now, let that sit there while we go get the coals fired up. I want to cook this around 250, and it's, you know, it's getting there. 262, if it's between 275 and 300, it's, it's okay too, but I'd rather do 250 to 275. So that's about where we are, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put this meat on. Now, let me tell you how I set this up. All right. I put just half a chimney of coals and I cracked the vents and we're going to cook right over here. So I'm just going to take this London broil, pick it up and just set it right like that. That is going to go right there on top of the coals because that's where we're going to sear this thing. Go ahead and get a meat probe into it. Just right down into the center. And when it's at about, uh, get back over here. When it's at about 125-ish, 120, 125-ish, we'll go ahead and sear it. I'm looking for a medium rare on this thing. One other thing I want to do is put a little bit of tallow into my cast iron pan. Made that from a brisket I cooked a while back. I save all the fat. So anyway, put a little tallow in the bottom of that pan and let it heat up there before we sear this off. Get that pan really hot. All right, don't bother with that. It's been cooking, yeah, it got up to about 280 for a while, but 250, maybe not quite an hour. I don't know, but it's at about 120. So I want to go ahead and sear this off. I'm looking for about a 145 internal temperature. Uh, I'd eat it a little rare, but I'm serving this to family members. So we need to be medium to medium well. So if it's 145 to 155, once we're finished searing it, then it'll be good. So let me get this off of here. Look, my uh, grill's been leaning a little bit, I guess, because that is, that tallow's not even in there. Let me get my glove on and we'll get that even. Let's also give the coals a chance to heat up a little bit and get this pan even hotter. All right, go ahead and pull that out. Turn this off because you're not gonna need it anymore. Let that pan get kind of hot. Feels extremely hot. Look at that on the bottom, y'all. Y'all gotta see that. Let me just turn that around. Can y'all see? Come over here, and you gotta see this now. See how beautiful that looks on the bottom? Let's drop it right down there like that. Don't fit my pan, will it? There we go. Get in there. Now you may be wondering why am I searing this in a cast iron skillet?
Now you may be wondering why I'm searing this in a cast iron skillet. That's because Aaron Franklin's barbecue sauce recipe calls for um, about three tablespoons of brisket drippings. Well, I'm not cooking a brisket. I'm cooking this London broil, aka round roast. So we gotta use the drippings from this, all right? Plus with that chicory rub and that espresso sauce, I just know it's gotta taste good. It's gonna have to taste good. So we're gonna wait about three minutes. You can hear it sizzling. What's they call that? ASMR, whatever. I don't know what that silly stuff is, but just listen to it sizzle. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. All right, I turned the pan around while you were gone. Um, it's been searing about three minutes now. Exactly 180 seconds, no more, no less. Scouts on her. Look at that. Mmm. I'm going to go about two minutes or so on this side. I'm going to check it with the uh, thermopop. All right, pop. it's about 135 internal temp now, so what I'm going to do is just pick it up and bring it inside. We're going to cover it. Can you hear it sizzle? It'll continue to cook and get up to medium well, which is around 145, or at least that's what I'm hoping. But, hey, it's medium now. That's what I like it. So I'm just going to bring it on in. You listen. Listen. Let's get that sauce made. All right, to make Franklin sauce now, we need one and a half cups of ketchup. I've got that in the pot, and I just turned the stove on, okay? We're going to need um, a quarter cup of dark brown sugar, well packed. That's going to be a little more because it's actually light brown sugar. You need um, a tablespoon of garlic and onion powder. I've got the garlic and onion powder in there together. You can see the two different colors. You need a quarter cup of soy sauce. Sorry quarter cup of soy sauce, and you need a half cup each of apple cider and uh, white vinegar. And we want to begin to bring that to a boil, all right? We also need three tablespoons of brisket drippings, two to three tablespoons of brisket drippings. So, this has been sitting right there like that. And I'm gonna try to get these drippings in there. And that's all we got. Maybe we'll have more later and add it in there. Doesn't that look beautiful? Mmm, can't wait to cut it. Let's sit over and rest. It was still sizzling just a moment ago. All right, and the last ingredient you're gonna need is uh, three tablespoons of espresso. I just brewed up some espresso. Um, it's actually a little cold now, but that's about three tablespoons. I measured it out earlier, and that's about where the cup needs to be, so. That goes in last, all right? And I just use my little stove top espresso maker, like that thing. All right, and you can see this is starting to boil, so we need to start stirring. We're gonna bring this to a boil and let it um, simmer down for about 15 minutes once it comes to a strong boil. Now while it cooked and the London broil rested, I continued to add drippings to it. All right, it's been simmering now for about 20 minutes, like the instructions say. I'm going to add the rest of these drippings as this uh, London broil steak has rested and some of the juices come out. I'm going to add some more juices, uh, drippings to it. I'm going to add in the espresso. And go ahead and turn the heat off and give it one more good stir or whisk. All right. Getting about time to cut that steak. All right, uh, I don't have a lid that fits that pan very well. Just a Dutch oven lid that I have that's close enough. So let's take it out of here. It's been resting as long as it took me to make the sauce. And I'll pour those right over the top of it. Daughter's just off camera, y'all. And uh, she can't wait. It smells delicious, doesn't it, Hannah? Mm -hmm. All right, I think the grain is running like this. Yep, thin slices of what you're supposed to cut. I was looking for medium, that's about medium, maybe medium well in the center. I did check it. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. Mm. 
could have gone for a little more medium well, but because that's medium rare right there, but I think it's going to be beautiful. That's a little rare. I'll have that piece. That's medium. That, that piece is a little too thick for sandwich. Mm. All right. Let's taste test. Y'all know my Hannah. daughter Hannah. Say hi, Hannah. Hi. All right, show me a piece you're gonna try. She's gonna try a little piece at first. All right, and then I've got that sauce right in here. Mm. First, we're gonna try it without the sauce. Go ahead and eat that one, then you can get another one and dip in the sauce. That's good. That's really good. Well, that's good. It is a tough cut of meat. One thing I know about beef, I don't know a lot about beef, but the less you pay, the more you chew. The more you pay, the less you chew. But this one is really tender. We marinated it, came from a good place, Excuse me, pasture prime. All right, I don't want to double dip, so I'm gonna dip that side into the sauce. Try this espresso sauce. Oh, I love that That's espresso really sauce. Good. An espresso barbecue sauce from Aaron That's Franklin. Really if you've good. never made that, may put it in the Googler machine. You can find it. That stuff is really good. All right, time to make up a sandwich. sandwich. Big blue barbecue. You know what I'm doing here? Making corn chips to go with it. Oh yeah, even though I think this is a fine piece of meat, uh, it's still a family meal, not a fancy meal. So what we're gonna do to make this sandwich, I'm just gonna lay the straps right, or strips rather, right across the um, Texas toast like that. Put on some of this delicious sauce. By the way, I've got some homemade corn chips. That was featured in my last video, and the kids wanted some more, so I made some more. All right. Just like that. Mm. That's going to be my lunch.